Hey y'all, in today's video I wanted to go over how to never fail a base coat using polyaspartic ever again for yourself. In this video I'll have a lot of tips and tricks to make sure that you don't waste any time and as well you don't end up getting product that cures so fast that you can't throw the flakes into it. So let's just get right into it here for you. This is my co-owner and one of my guys here dealing with a base coat here onto approximately 700 square feet with Resinworks polyaspartics that we're utilizing here. So really just going into it for you. What people will start with is essentially having the spike shoes on so you don't have to deal with messing with them you can also see in the background my co-owner real quick i just wanted to let you guys know about the new school community that i've dropped so that we can really organize everything that's going on for floor coatings for ins, for the mindset necessary to continue the business on for the sales marketing and into the future hiring onto there it's a link down below from essentially everything that i've done all the failures save you thousands of hours to get it right the first time for you first link down below all free for you hope you have a good one and enjoy the video as already poured out both of the part A's mixed in the pigment into them as well and then just has the part B on standby. For this one we usually do about three gallons at a time for the first pour and then another batch so really trying to get practically an equal ratio if you're going to have to do two batches. If you've been doing polyus products you know putting six gallons down aka about 750 square feet with only two guys on one batch is pretty hard with it so just making sure that you have everything there so that when you do need to make your next batch, you have everything prepared and it's all ready to go. So part A, all pigmented. He's pouring it in the part B right there. And now he's mixing it up for two minutes onto that. Mix it all the way back in together with each other. Pour in the xylene or the acetone for whatever you're using so that you have a little bit of an easier time. And then as you can see, if you have a polyaspartic, most of them will not be that reactive while they're still inside of the bucket. So always try to maintain all of the product that you can inside of the bucket rather than letting it stay onto the floor. And at the very beginning, trying to make sure that you're cutting in as much as you possibly can so that when your guys are coming through with the notch squeegees and everything, that they have enough wiggle room so that they're not having to go back and forth and back and forth with it. So as you can see, they've almost got practically halfway as much as they needed to go with that on that initial. And then started splicing it out. We're using, again, a notch squeegee. Our product is at one gallon is 150 square feet per gallon. He wet his squeegee there, back rolling everything at this time, going back and forth. And they practically got this whole batch out right here. So. There was a little bit of extra product and then they spooled the extra out, back rolled it once again, just to make sure that we're consistent across there for the whole entire floor coating. And as you can see, it's not so crazy hot out, so it's not the most dangerous just yet, probably about 60 degrees out right now for the guys. And as you can see, they were able to practically get everything all the way out before having to deal with that. So now with the flakes, another thing is you want to make sure that you have as much of your flakes as close to you as possible already into the five gallon buckets and then just start throwing it before the polyaspartic ends up hardening up onto you because again, obviously you'll have some issues. My co-owner here is just finishing up the last bits that we have and they actually over poured quite a bit onto the floor more than they needed. Try to avoid that as much as you can, obviously, because that is wasted time that you have to deal with. Just wanted to put that in there for you guys just so you can see that obviously we're always trying to be perfect, but there is still things to be considered and to be done. So now as you can see, we're getting full plate coverage onto the floor, looking back, looking back, making sure that we have all that, no shiny spots onto the floor. And they're just now finishing up and throwing the additional flakes as need be onto the floor there for themselves. And that's practically it. Essentially, make sure that <laughs> right onto the redo, we'll just go straight through it real quick, speed run onto it for you guys. So essentially, make sure that you have all of your flakes out, make sure that you have your part A already poured out for the quantities that you're looking for. Mark the box. The, five gallon buckets so that you know that you're getting the right quantity into there at that time for yourself so that you waste as little time having to remix your part A. Make sure that you have your acetone or your xylene ready for your next batch after you pour the first one. Keep as much of the polyaspartic into the bucket as you possibly can so that it doesn't start to cure onto the floor. Only pour out what you need at those current time that you do need that product. Make sure that you're not squeezing it out, notch squeezing it out as much as you possibly can and again using as little product as possible. He back rolled this here, but then they were seeing a little bit of it being too thick, so they needed to go back again with that. Normally, that should not be a problem, and it should definitely be something that is thought about beforehand. Just wanted to put some spoilers out there for you guys to show you what is the best, what is necessary to also be done to make it as perfect as possible. Then have your guy back rolling everything. Not too fast, not too slow. Obviously, this is like 10 to 20 times speed, but you know you really want to make sure that you're not just kicking over the product, increasing additional friction for no reason onto the floor, because that will cure your polyaspartic faster as well. Sometimes faster is not always better. Then you want to have your guy that's continuing to lead onto there with all the product to continue to get that all completed and then cut in the rest of the bits while that guy is still going. You also want to make sure that you're having your flake up to as far as you've already uh, rolled out and ensure that it's at the proper quantity for you. This will allow you to ensure that, you know, all this product that's here at the back at the very beginning of the garage is already coated. So that when you make your next batch, you know, you're working with fresh product and you'll have some additional time to be able to work with it. 
and then afterwards have that final guy still cutting everything in as perfectly as possible onto there and then have your other plate guy continuing on and then as you can see about 750 square feet done in no time two guys no problem using full of polyaspartic floors that's it hope you have a great day and as well like i said above join the free school community i'm trying to really take this to the moon and i think that you guys will be uh, pretty surprised with what i'm trying to actually accomplish here for you so wish you the best see you on the inside have a great day link at the bottom there for you peace